Space Quest 5. Apparently this is better than the last one. A lot better. At least it had better be, because that's what people have told me. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, definitely a very Star Trek vibe. Or, should I say, Zap Brannigan. <laughs> of course, this came long before Futurama. I wonder if... No, I mean, Zap Brannigan is more of a Kirk-inspired parody, and I guess so is Roger in this case. I expect this to have nothing to do with the previous games because continuity is not really a thing <laughs> in this series. But apparently this is pac Belly's favourite uh, entry in the series, so hopefully it'll be worth it. It'll be worth all that we went through <laughs> with Space Quest 4 to get to this point. Captain's Log, SCS Excalibur, Stardate something or other, Fleet Admiral Roger Walker commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of space known as the Menudo Triangle. I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievement as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. Yep, no continuity. This is not the person we knew. Uh huh. I go forward with total confidence in my ship and my crew, and yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of travelling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Oh, well, continuity is here. Each night my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said would one day be my wife. I know she's out there somewhere. What's her name? Wankmeister or something? Ridiculous. But that's not important right now. The fate of trillions rides on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, I must follow the supreme guideline. Is this the prime directive? To boldly... Uh, yeah, uh-huh. No, no, no. To bravely traverse where no... Cre yeah, that's not right. Uh, skip it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. It's a very... Uh, on the nose Star Trek parody. Admiral, strike ship's coming in at point three five. Oh shit. A lot, a lot. Shields up, battle stations, lock weapons. Okay. Neutron beams locked, proton torpedoes armed. Tactical, fire neutron beams, helm hard to port. Yep, they've definitely watched Star Trek. Oh no, it's Captain Giant Chin. Captain uh, Wilco, what in the name of the 7th Star Cluster are you doing in the bridge simulator? Oh, now it makes sense. Get your sorry carcass out of there and get back to class where you belong, Space Cadet. I was just playing a video game. And if I catch you in there again without permission, I'll have you tossed out of the academy so fast you'll have. You'll get warp disorientation. Damn it. I'm not even allowed to do simulations? That sucks. It's like an actual flight simulator, I guess. Does it rock around? Actually, I just realized that looks like the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. His illusions of space rain grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk. Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy, where he's enrolled himself in the attempt to realize his lifelong dream of becoming a starship captain. The last several months have not been easy for our hero. What with having to juggle between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. Oh dear. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that fate was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. Yeah. You gotta do work if you wanna join Starfleet or Star Confederacy. You don't they don't just let it, anyone join. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, look at that! The aging behemoth has outlived its intended lifespan by several decades and will soon be heading for the scrapyards. Excuse me. That looks very much like the nacelle of the uh, Constitution class enterprise. This looks like a Battlestar Galactica uh, Viper. Alpha class strike fighter from the Colony Worlds. This baby has it all. Speed, maneuverability, and enough firepower to blast apart a comet. Too bad you'll probably never get even within shouting distance of one in your natural lifetime. Hmm. 
Starcon Registry lists the ship as the personal launch of Ambassador Beatrice Wankmeister from the G6 Quadrant. You dimly recall hearing her name once before, but the effort to remember anything further results in nothing more than a storm of misfired brain synapses and a dull headache. That's typical, isn't it, of Roger? Like, he remembers her face, but not her name. <laughs> God, he doesn't deserve, well, any of this, really. <laughs> What's this? This panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the Starcon Space Academy. Okay, does it work? Damn, the holo map directory isn't working right now, and it's a shame because the map system is really cool looking with Goro shading, texture mapping, and ray traced images of every room in the complex. Uh huh. I'm sure it would have still looked shit by, the, by today's standards. Where's this door go? Small janitorial closet is situated in one end of the hallway. Well, that seems where we belong. You don't have time to waste mucking about in the closet right now. Oh. What am I supposed to be doing? Probably attending class or something. Ooh, more spaceships. What's this? I don't recognize this one. A Delton frigate from the G6 quadrant. Hopefully a ship like this will one day be yours. Provided, of course, that you make it through the Starcon's rigorous academy training regimen. Well, apparently, I don't think he's got much of a chance of that, considering he won't even read a textbook. Named for his beloved wife, this sleek corvette called... Lady Plus Bucker is reserved for the Academy Commandant's use exclusively. Recently, several freshmen were disciplined for scandalously altering the ship's name as a cadet initiation prank. Hmm. I see. <laughs> this three man fighter was captured from the dreaded pilots of Pirates of Pestilon during their daring attempt to escape the confines of Space Quest 3. Ah, uh, yes, the fourth wall, be damned. Mm. Uh, security alpha beyond this point. Why is that backwards? Okay, I can't read it. There's a planet. It appears to, oh, a moon, sorry. It appears to be one of the nine moons of Nova. Okay. Who's this person? Yeah. Security guard prevents an authorized access to the maximum security area beyond his post. Well, pre presumably that's not where we belong. I could probably just, yeah, I could select like that. So the environments are nice. They still have a bit of that um, muddiness. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Excuse me. Hang on. I, <laughs> I was that. Space cadets are not allowed beyond this point. Oh. Well, what about Elvis? <laughs> Is he going home to his people? A massive sentry prevents the unauthorized access to the maximum security area beyond this point. Alright, oh, yeah. Okay. What is this? Anti-gravity lift provides means of travel to and from the floor of the Okay. It's a tr it's a it's a it's a thing. Let's do it. <laughs> I thought it was gonna rocket him, like uh, at great speed. But no. It's uh, oh this is nice. Top down perspective. The Starcon crest is dull and dingy. Looks like it could use a good scrubbing. Hmm. This sounds like the job for a janitor. What do we have on us? Oh, we have Buckazoids. Cash money splendor light. Doesn't say how much we have. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> He's playing Missile Command. I just realised that. This computer monitor displays pertinent information. That man is playing Gallagher. I see you there. <laughs> the way he swaggers. He thinks he's so great. <laughs> and he's not. Even after five games, he's still a loser. This patrol craft was damaged in a skirmish with the smugglers on the rim of the galaxy. It is currently undergoing a major overhaul. Unfortunately, it suffered less damage than the ship Roger tried to place in hyperspace before leaving space dock. When did that happen? I don't know. I don't remember anything. This bulk cargo freighter contains supplies for the colony on Clorox 2. Trainers like this one are used to instruct cadets in basic spaceflight techniques. Due to the relative lack of skill by cadets, these ships suffer a high rate of attrition. Looks like a UFO. Current record for the number of ships wrecked stands at three, and is currently held by Roger, which includes a notable incident where he totaled a ship without even leaving the hangar. Odds are two to one among his classmates that Rog will break his own record before graduating. Yeah. 
I just don't have a lot of confidence in this guy. This is Lord of Conference Room A. The skillet glitz is too low to enter this room. In fact, it's so low you need to pass just to go to the restroom. Wow. Oh, hello. It's, uh, people. Alien people. One with a long nose and one with red skin. Fellow members of the Titan Knit Starcon Cadet Brigade. Let's have a chat, shall we? Drop dead, Wilco. Oh. What about you? Also drop dead, Wilco. <laughs> Yeah, this sleek little booty is for sale. Could be yours for a mere ten thousand bucks. Sides. That's not a bad deal. The ship once belonged to the two guys from Andromeda. But it was seized when one of them walked out on his ten thousand bucks. Side tab in the Academy Lounge. The SCS Lollipop, a good ship. <laughs> is that a that's a Star Trek Next Generation reference? I think. When Riker's playing with a with a. Like a holographic recursion of a friend of his. He says, no, the name of my ship is the Lollipop. You've already been kicked out. Oh, yeah, that's the British simulator. Where am I supposed to? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm already stuck. Okay. Uh, maybe I can scrub this thing clean with my bare hands. You might have better luck if you tried to use some cleaning supplies. Yeah, well, it wouldn't let me into the janitorial closet. Um. Yeah, every way just leads back here. Huh. Well, oh, and this guy's playing asteroids. Space cadets not allowed. Yes. Where am I allowed? Like, where's where? Do, how do I get to my bunk? Do I have a bunk, mate? You've always wondered what this panel does, but I've never been able to figure out its function. The explanation was probably given in one many classes. Okay, yeah. So just Roger's just an idiot, wandering around in circles for the whole for the rest of his life. Oh, I guess I didn't try to go in here. I just got scared away by the uh, the mean cadets. Didn't actually try to go. There we go. Ah. Sorry, I'm late, Professor. I was wandering around in circles for fucking ages because I couldn't remember where the classroom was. You mean... The ULP Starcon aptitude test is today! Yes, sir, I'll get started right away. Brilliant. <laughs> What's that? Come talk to you after class? Yes, sir. The. <laughs> okay. Grunko is commanding a Nova class scout ship when he finds himself face to face with three Horak battle cruisers. He should surrender in the face of impossible odds, pretend they aren't there, activate his ship's self destruct mechanism, beam over a pick you up bouquet, or reboot. What kind of question is this? I. None of these are right. This is a stupid reboot. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately open fire with every weapon at your disposal. No. Broadcast of Arkansas Rydal of Valkyries over the comm link. Beam your entire crew over to the ship as a gesture of goodwill. B then A. None of the above, I think. Before beaming down to an unexplored planet for the first time, you should be sure to check. So that your seat belt is fastened and the tray tables are uh, yeah. You'll fly, your life insurance couple is. Coverage. The FETs are valve in your oxygen mask. Uh, the planet's atmosphere readings, obviously. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon from vines and sticks. The uh, Jim Kirk way. Stuff a banana in its exhaust pipe. I don't know whose way that is. Drop a big rock on the robot and shout, Hasta la vista, baby. Roll in the mud to camouflage yourself, that's Predator. Climb a tree, flap your arms wildly and scream tweet tweet at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behaviour of the ruby-throated Arcturian Swine Falcon as a diversionary tactic. Uh, I think the most logical one of these is the banana, and I hate to say that. <laughs> You're on an EVA with a partner, and you notice his face is turning blue and he's clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that you will soon need a new partner. I mean, that's not, in, that's not untrue. In a burst of creative insight, he's created a new dance called the Moonwalk. 
Uh, he is suffering from vitamin, from a vitamin deficiency. He needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. He fell for the old golf ball and the air hose trick. I believe it is A and D. To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should wrap everything in aluminium, aluminium foil. <laughs> Cook each meal at the maximum power of seconds. No, that would be a horrible mess. Put a live space varmint in with each meal so you can more easily... T no! Huck the thing and settle for roasting wieners on the maneuvering jets. Inject a radioactive plutonium ice tape into each piece of food when it's close to spreading. These are all terrible ideas. I think this one is actually the least stupid of all of them. If Grebe leaves the Crab Nebula at 3200 GST and travels at 9.75 million ZPM, how long should it take him to reach planet Davicon 5 if he has the solar wind at his back? Uh, he'll never reach Davicon 5, the solar wind is highly unstable, I'll blow him. Of course, uh, solar wind isn't that powerful, especially if he's travelling at 9.75 million Z. Maybe you should go scrub the crest now? I haven't finished the questions! Uh, uh, there, I'll just guess. How fast does light travel through a vacuum? Uh, 186,000 metres per second. Um, which is an example of a fuzzy boundary. The area in the space between two planetary bodies where a small third of it is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either. That might be it. It's not the event horizon. The place where a receding hairline gives way to a bare scalp. The point at which the marginal utility of trying to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity of cost of Okay, it's this one. To successfully accomplish a manual molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transport unit, you should reverse the phase polarity of the interface grid, jiggle the handle, pray fervently to whatever deity you to believe in. Uh, I believe it's reverse phase polarity, that's always uh, correct. What's happening? Did I win? The test over already? Yes, sir. I agree that cleaning the Academy Crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. I'll get right on it. I was trying to do it earlier. Uh, I was doing everything in the wrong order. Did I pass? I guess I won't know yet. Uh, I guess I've got to go to the janitor closet now. That was a weird test. It's very goat. Uh, from, like, before that test. Oh, hello. Hello, fellow classmates. It's a small group of your brother cadets. Take off, Wilco. Well, that was more polite than the last guy. Thank you. Oh, right, that's not the closet. Yeah, okay. 